Sí, ella nos presenta, dijo. Sí, esa, sí, me hace, son 20 personas. No son Simón y. Se fue Simón. Claro, sí, cuando me voy a la mía. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Michelangelo Stage. Our next speakers are really important advertising figures in Europe. Mr. Chacho Puebla and Francisco Casis from Lola Madrid, who will talk us about um, technology kill the ad, but save advertising. Hello. This is, you take the microphone. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Pancho. I'm Chacho. And uh, we're we going to talk about... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're doing it. Chacho Pancho, Chancho. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, advertising and how technology is influencing advertising right now, okay? So, to start... Uh, I mean, right now, the advertising smells really like dead. I mean, it's happening and people hate advertising. We know it. I mean, we also... You hate advertising, <laughs> you know it. We also, we also know that people doesn't like it, especially bad advertising. Um, but it's happening something really interesting that is... The, under that smell of dead bodies piling each other is coming a new a new thing that it's a new flavor of that we are watching and and smelling and, and feeling there. And yeah, uh, because technology has uh, has bring that new sense, no? Yeah, and has opened a lot of opportunities while also killing the traditional ad, because uh, actually uh, 13 years ago, that for example, like 30, how how this has dramatically changed. 13 years ago, it was an agency that was called Cliff Freeman that was doing this kind of advertising that we will watch now. Yeah, 13 years ago, that is like... It was like, a, I don't know, a long time ago in your... Many years <laughs> in Apple years or iPod years. They were doing this kind of advertising that was really traditional. It was amazing, and they were considered the best agency in the world only 13 years ago. Well, only. Hello. Evet, yarışmacımız Yaşar yürüyor. Yaşar hazırlanıyor. Mükemmel bir atlayış. Atladı. Çok güzel bir atlayış. Herkes şaşkın. Atlayıştı. Evet, omuz ve baş salama. Evet, ve Yaşar görünüyor. Hoppa. And one more so you can see what kind of work this agency did was amazing TVCs, uh, amazing commercials. And this was a, uh, an amazing agency that was doing amazing work 13 years ago. They was winning the big, uh, the big awards in, in advertising. They was winning the Grand Prix in Cannes, which is the best uh, award that you can win in advertising. But things changed. That agency, a couple of years later, they had to close. They was going out of business. They didn't understand how technology was changing, they didn't understand the internet, they didn't understand the new communication, they didn't, they didn't adapt to the new world, and they disappeared, like this. 
Yeah, in 2009, after being the, the best and the most awarded agency in the world, they just closed their, their, their doors. Uh, clients want to do digital. They didn't want it to. And uh, one of the examples we wanted to show is in that same year, 2009, the Grand Prix in Cannes, that uh, only nine years before was Fox, that was only humor, audiovisual. Uh, in this case was uh, from Amsterdam, DDB, an agency that did this uh, commercial for Philips. The first interactive uh, commercial. Okay, this was a couple of years after the ones that we saw before, the really funny ones. And this changed completely the, by that time what uh, everybody was doing in advertising because it was the first TVC that was played on the internet and you can interact with and you can go forward and backward and you can zoom in and zoom out. And, yeah, and actually you don't see the logo, you don't see the brand, you don't know what they're talking about, but was that a trick that really engaged people and, and you could move all along this carousel, the ad is called carousel, so you can move all along this ad and pick on different uh, features from the TV, from the actual uh, uh, Philips TV, so it was a very different way of communicating versus, you know, the old Super Bowl ad, you know, 30 second commercial that has to be funny and has to work, you know, in this uh, uh, TV. And what is happening right now, I mean, it's it's a it's a battlefield right now because we are learning. We are it's, everything is changing. You no, know, this is the advertising world, and there are like two sides playing. It's the new guys that they are doing. Let's call it the new the new things guys that they are trying to experiment a lot with in, with digital. They try to un understand robotics. They try to understand other things, other ways to other process, all, all new things to how communicate. Uh, or how to relate brands with people and how to engage them t by using technology uh, primarily. And they are, at the same time, because they didn't pass that much time. I mean, it's, we think in the last, I don't know, 13 years or in the last 20 years, it's people that still being the bosses and still being there. So they, they don't want to change that, that things. They want to continue doing what they're doing because they think that it's okay and they're still still working the the traditional media and the traditional audiovisual and they are right because it's it's happening. I mean, there is a lot of audiovisual that is really impactful right now. I mean, it's like the old times is, are coming back, just that they are being amplified by technology. So, I would say are they the new guys and the old guys? Is this this 
the technology bring this fight internally in the agencies. We see it every day. We see traditional agencies fighting with new agencies and agencies that they are doing, trying to do both things perfectly or trying to mix this, these things perfectly. Yeah, especially because clients also, they're scared of moving from a more traditional way of doing things to a more digital. So actually they just ask for traditional stuff while they say, what, what can you do online? What can you do in digital? Okay. So what we wanted to do is like, In fact, it's a really good fight, what is happening inside, because it's bringing a lot of really good work. It's a lot of good work right now in, in, the, in the world coming up. But it's the mixture of the two things. It's really good audiovisual, and at the same time, really good apply to all the other media, so really good uh, made the interaction by using the new technologies that we have. So we want to share with you some examples. The first one is uh, it's an audiovisual music clip that probably Maybe you have seen. seen. Set fire to your hair, poke a stick at a grizzly bear, eat medicine that's out of date, use your private parts as piranha bait. this red button do Around trains, a message from Metro. You could see a video clip, three minute video clip of a song that is a really nice song, but it's a very different way of telling people not to, to, to be careful around uh, the subway. And, and even though it's a really amazing uh, audiovisual piece, it's a really beautiful, beautifully crafted uh, music video, they, what they did was amplify it, you know? They, 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 take this uh, idea and took it everywhere they could, Twitter, Instagram, and we're going to see how they actually did that and how they turned this into the most, one of the most successful, the most successful no. public service campaign in the history of advertising in the world and one of the most awarded campaigns in advertising history too. Young people don't listen to public safety messages, so how do you get them to stop being unsafe around trains? by making it the dumbest way to die. A song 
was written called Dumb Ways to Die. It was released as a YouTube video and within a week had over 20 million views. And within six weeks, over 40 million views. Gift sharing from our dedicated Tumblr site generated huge and immediate viral effect and helped the campaign stay on the front page of Reddit for two days after the launch. Within days, Dumb Ways to Die became the world's most shared video. The song was released on iTunes and climbed the charts in over 20 countries, and in some countries even making the top 10. Awareness went through the roof, but we had to get people to change their behaviour. So every element of the campaign directly drove people to pledge to be safe around trains. Nearly a million people took the pledge on our website. The little book of Dumb Ways to Die got kids to pledge at the website. Outdoor advertising, designed to generate Instagram-friendly content, got people to promise to be safe. And a smartphone game also got people to make the promise. The results? People adopted the message like never before. Over 200 cover versions and parodies were made and shared in the millions. Schools started using it as a teaching tool in classrooms. Dumb Ways to Die became the most shared and most viral public service campaign in history. And most important of all, the Metro has seen a 21% reduction in accidents and deaths compared to the same time last year. Be safe around trains, a message from Metro. This is the, the perfect example of what, how this war, this fight that is happening between traditional and, and, and the new thinking, it's being good for, for advertising and be, it's being good to see new ideas coming up. This is a strong piece of uh, audiovisual that was like a slice and take it to everything that possible you can use around you. Know? Every, every, every little piece of technology that you can use to try to amplify the idea, make that this idea was the most bigger uh, public service announcement in the history of communications. Yeah, 10 years ago it would have been just a 30 second ad, uh, maybe a, 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 a short, <laughs> uh, and, and with nothing else, you know, and now it can be a lot more. And we're going to see another example. Uh, was This was one uh, also one of the most awarded campaigns this year, and it's for uh, Intel and Toshiba. And what they did was they did an online film, okay, but what's the What's the news about doing an online film? They, uh, the thing is, they, they got this story where there, there was this guy that every day he woke up as a different person. So actually, they made people participate in the film being the protagonist, because if the protagonist you know, wakes up every day, he's a different person, you could you know, upload your video and be that guy for a day. This is the strange story of Alex, a man who wakes up every day in a different body. And for a while, that was okay. Alex kept a daily record of his odd life on his computer, which accompanied him everywhere he went. One day, though, Alex fell in love. And that is when everything changed. How could he have a relationship if he always looked different on the outside? Have you ever had a girlfriend? We had girlfriends. A lot of girlfriends. Each one. Only for a night. The Beauty Inside, inspired by Intel Inside, featuring the Toshiba Ultrabook, starring Topher Grace, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, and the audience. The movie was aired in six weekly episodes. And because Alex looked different every day, anyone in the audience could play him and be featured in the film. Each episode contained a few webcam diaries in which real fans actually wrote and acted out some of Alex's most intimate moments in the movie. I called her three times a day. I hung up every time. And in the end, the audience helped give Alex hundreds of faces. This love story by two technology companies reached 70 million views. It got strangers discussing their own sense of identity. 
all while celebrating the fact that it's what's inside that counts. She was right. I would see her again. But she would never see me. Again, another example of what could have been an ad, 30 second ad, a nicer story about the guy that wakes up different every day, but turns out to be a campaign where everybody could participate and you integrate you know, everything. I mean, what is, you, uh, one question, do you hear as well? Do you hear the videos? Because here we cannot hear anything. We don't I'm, listen I'm, nothing. I, I hear that guy a lot more than <laughs> I hear guy. the video. Yeah, yeah, okay, so you're listening to stuff, great. Well, what is doing technology, I think right now, and, and probably some people in the business is not understanding, it's like technology is confronting with us. We are our own limit right now. I mean, like you probably, you know, we are living right now in the golden era for uh, idea people. I mean, there is no limit if you want. If you, you don't know nothing, it's because you don't want to know it. It's not that I don't know how to do that. You don't really don't want to know because if you want to know, you go to Google, you go to YouTube, you go to yeah. whatever wiki, and you find out how that can be done. There is a lot of people that won't share that knowledge. So you have to go and search it. That's an, that I don't know. It's happening a lot of in advertising. I don't know how to, I don't know, do this. I don't know how to do that. I don't know. You don't want to know. If you want to know, I'm sure that someone will explain it for you on the internet. Yeah, you don't depend on your parents buying the encyclopedia or uh, traveling abroad or whatever. You just go log and search. You, you don't need... I mean, if you want to do something right now, I mean, the you don't same. need... It's, it's really difficult uh, to stop. You, there is crowdsourcing. There is a lot of tools that help you that the things can happen. I mean, when I was a kid, long time ago, uh, I, I couldn't... To make my ideas do because I didn't have the tools. I didn't have. I, I didn't. I didn't could reach the people. I don't know. It was too many things that pushed me back. Right now, I mean, you have everything to be done. We have everything to be done. We have every all the possibilities that the things happen. It's really easy more than the time, and the impact can be anywhere. I mean, we are more connected than never. No smartphones are there. Uh, the Internet of Things. Everything is interconnected. Understand that. Make us that we, I mean, the, the only limit that exists already is us, is how we want to push it. In advertising, that is making a super amazing dramatic change because you go till you want to go. You grow the, your idea till you want to grow your idea. That happened also with the brands. The brands go till they want. They don't understand yet the potential that they, everybody has. It's like, it's a com totally and completely and every day struggle internally. Uh, personally and with the brands and the, with the companies it's like we are living a really powerful moment of change right now as, as a, like I say it's a fight right now yeah, and, there, and there's not so many excuses you can use to not do something actually what we're going to see now we're going to show you a work from Oreo the famous cookie and it's something that could have could not uh, could have not been done uh, five years ago because or it, it can be done in traditional media right now because it's very expensive the way they celebrate their uh, 100th uh, anniversary. Let, let's take a look. Little girls have pretty curls but I like Oreo. Oreo recently celebrated a big birthday. <laughs> really big. Turning 100 can mean just one thing. You're old. Really old. Unless you give it a twist. The Oreo Daily Twist. A simple idea to make this old brand a vital part of pop culture, the digital world, and everyday conversation all at once. A hundred pieces of content created in a hundred days. In honor of the hundredth birthday. 100% responsive. Here's how it worked. Every morning we searched for what people were talking about. Once concepts were developed, there was a full production team waiting to execute. By 6 p.m., we pushed the day's twist out to Oreo's 30 million Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter followers and archived it on Oreo's online hub. How do we kick it off? Well, maybe you heard about that. Oreos are gay. <laughs> I mean, 
night, Oreo posted this on their Facebook page. New rule, wing nuts have to stop saying they're going to boycott Oreos because they made a gay cookie. But we didn't stop there. And neither did the fans. In just a hundred days, we turned an old cookie into an icon. Oreo didn't just reflect the news, it became the news. And we made a hundred years old look pretty young. Like Pancho was saying, I mean, 10 years ago, this would be impossible. I mean, how you can be 100 times, 100 days be in contact with all that amount of people you will have to need to buy, I don't know, 100 pages in, in newspapers or seconds in TV, it could have been impossible. It could have been the, the, the amount of production, it has been terrible. I mean, 100 ads for 100 days run in different papers, different countries, and with this just idea that has a lot to do with the Google, you know, how they change uh, the Google logo every day. It's, it's more or less the same, but they put a brand and they put what they needed to say every day, what people was talking about, and, and, and they made it, you know, uh, interesting and fun to, to watch. Because things are really changing a lot. I mean, at the same time, we are more exposed than never, you know? I mean, as people, as brand, for example, these guys, you know, you know this story, right? The, the guy said, if I hit one million uh, likes, I get laid with her, right? Funny, great, did they get more than one million? They get like 1.4 million likes. I think that probably they had sex. Uh, twice. <laughs> twice. Uh, what I, I tried to search it now, the post, and it, there is not there. Because it will be weird. How do you explain that to your kids? How, I mean, how, how she will explain that to their kids? How, and what? she will probably <laughs> not be married to this guy. So probably. she has to and They have 14 or 15 years old. So how we are going to deal with that past as persons but at the same time as brands how the brands gonna deal with that past how the brands will 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 deal with what is happening right now and what they didn't did by that time what they didn't act like they uh, they should be acting right now what they didn't pro pronounce against whatever that it was happening at that time if you said that you was promoting the peace what you was not doing that when was that world was starting what if you were saying this what you wasn't doing it we will be condemned for the past also, as brands and as people. And how you do it, how you will deal with that? We think that being honest, I mean, brands need to understand themselves like we need to understand ourselves. I think that probably the girl will say, yeah, I have sex with that guy, no problem. Now, and with that one and with that one, they will be more open. I think the future generations, it will be more open. But brands that has like 100 years old or 200 years old, they cannot change overnight. So they have to really Find like what they like and what they don't like, and stand forward for that things and stand keep for something. Yeah. yeah, stand for something. So, and I think that the really big help in this uh, development was technology. Technology, I think, that made us more honest than never. In fact, I mean, it's an example. Us, you, you me, and him. Google you Google not. us, you find this. We but cannot hide that I was this picture fat. that we want to raise, but <laughs> and that's still fat that he had hair. We cannot hide that. I mean, it's there. <laughs> and we had really ugly T-shirts, but yeah, things. So I brands need to understand that they can do stuff uh, very quickly. They can connect with people, but things are going to stay forever. So what they do has to mean something. And that was what Chacha was saying. They need to stand for something. Brands need to say and give a message. If Coke is happiness, maybe Coke has something to say about Syria. Maybe not, but uh, because they really... Uh, serious subject but maybe because uh, what brands are doing now they're losing control of the brands actually if you're a coke fan you do stuff for coke and we see a lot of uh, content created by the the fans of the brand so you're gonna lose control but actually you're gonna have internet to say you know coke did this coke did that and and we you know we have to brands have to be clear about that technology did that technology really put everybody in front. I mean, you cannot hide anymore. You have, and the only, the only way to survive that is being honest. There are brands that they really understand that. We will show now an example of a brand that stands for the real beauty, and they are acting in that. I mean, they are not hiding it. They, are, they say, we believe in that you can, you can be beautiful, and we, whatever you are, 
and we will act in that sense. We will do something about we'll do it. Do something for that, and we're going to make you women feel good about yourself. So we're going to see two examples. One of the is an ad, and the other one is a whole campaign that I'm sure you all know. But it's nice to see how they it worked out in different channels. <laughs> And it's a brand that stands for the real beauty. They realize that 4% of women think that they are beautiful. So they are saying to all the women, no, you are really beautiful. Believe in yourself. And I will create a product because it's in my, in my DNA. I will do things that you feel more beautiful. But it has to start in you. You have to be, feel that you are beautiful. And they add in consequence. They did this spot and then they use technology to do other things. To um, yeah, the online world and to, to make it bigger, you yeah. know, make the, especially based on, this campaign is based on what Chacho said about the 4%, that it's an amazing uh, statistic that yeah. only 4% of women feel beautiful, so they said, what can we do with that? And they did this. of women believe they're beautiful. To inspire the other 96% to feel the same, we conducted a social experiment. We called in an FBI-trained sketch artist. First, he sketched portraits of the women based on their own self-descriptions. The older I've gotten, the more freckles I've gotten. I would say I have a pretty big forehead. Once I get a sketch, I say thank you very much, and then they leave. I don't see them. Then, he sketched the same women, based on descriptions by strangers who had met the women briefly. She had nice eyes. They lit up when she spoke. Cute nose. She had blue eyes, very nice blue eyes. Finally, we revealed the two sketches to the women themselves. This is the sketch that you helped me create, and that's a sketch that somebody described of you. Yeah, that's... Our experiment generated two films, eight individual short films, and an online exhibit of the sketches. The sketches visual became the icon of the campaign, used on print and out of home as thumbnails to encourage social media sharing and to illustrate articles on mass media publications. This gave cohesion to all the media touch points around the lead film that ran on TV and cinema. Very pretty girl. This actually is what Beth looked like. Yeah, it's true. And then you see how Beth described herself. And what I was describing. The sharing and buzz on social media quickly made the headlines of mass media publications all over the world. With just the first two weeks, the campaign was the fourth most shared ad of all time and was viewed more than 73 million times on YouTube. It became the most shared article in Mashable's history, and it generated 3.8 billion global impressions. Most importantly, it made real beauty a global topic of conversation again. So technology helps uh, brands to become more honest, more open, more close to people, more proactive, more curious, and, and again, maybe unlimited, because you can do all of many stuff. Uh, there are, no, I think, no things you cannot do. You can yeah. have this, the Oreo 
uh, example, you can have this example and how you can make, this was an, it could have been, you know, a very small experiment, but how they did it, bringing the guy from the FBI, turning them into short films in the internet, asking women how they felt about themselves, it became a lot bigger. And it, I think that what is happening with advertising now is that using technology, brands, not advertising, but brands are using technology to be more useful. I mean, that's what it, they will become more and more unlimited because they will try to help people by make, putting the brands to help you in your every day. And that is going to be huge. I mean, it's what is happening right now. They are trying to put, bring their own point of view to the table and say, I think this on me and I will help you in that search with my product, with my service. Yeah, and I think that the, the key about technology is that it needs to, to make brands, you know, do communication that's useful. You can do something with it. It helps you when you're in the street. It helps you, inspires you when you're uh, watching YouTube or whatever. It has to, to do something bigger than what we used to do in the traditional TVC. Okay. So now we're going to see some examples of how we think different pieces from the last month that we think that... Uh, you know, they show how technology is helping brands to communicate with people. This is an amazing case from uh, Japan, and it's a really simple idea as how you can get your phone to help someone that is visually impaired to see stuff. You're with your iPhone, there's someone that cannot see, and he sends you a message so you can, via your iPhone, tell him what he's uh, missing, and you can help him, actually. Finder image. Double tap to take a picture. Uploading. Awaiting reply. See a small stream in the foreground. Shape an extra fly. To your left, I see red tulips blooming. There's a group of runners stretching and warming up. Uploading. are from Australia and they look very fresh. I see a great buy. You should get them. Don't be afraid, just eat up uploading. Awaiting reply. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's amazing. It's a really simple idea how you can use people and how in, in these uh, days that we don't have time to maybe volunteer, spend a day with someone. It's just crowdsourcing the help and crowdsourcing the volunteers. Here's another example. It's a new tool. Maybe you know it. Uh, Thunder Club. It's how we can make uh, the, our messages online go uh, even bigger. We live in a culture where there are over 985 million Facebook posts every day and 400 million new tweets. But with so much noise, how do you rise above the clutter when you need to be heard? This is Thunderclap, the first crowd speaking platform that allows you to lend your voice to causes and ideas you believe in. Because when we speak together, we can make change happen. Here's how it works. 
set up your page, and create a tweet size message you want to spread. Set the number of supporters you want to back the message, and the date you want it to thunderclap. Invite people to donate their social reach on Facebook and Twitter. If you hit your goal number of supporters, your message will be automatically blasted out by each person that backed the cause, reaching every one of their friends and followers at exactly the same time. This amplifies the social reach from what might have been a few hundred supporters to thousands, even millions. But Thunderclap doesn't just broadcast messages to the widest possible audience. It connects each organizer with the analytics and details of everyone backing their cause. Thunderclap helps individuals speak up about causes they believe in. From the first ever Thunderclap for Wall Street reform that achieved a social reach of over four million to a mother's plea to find a bone marrow donor for her daughter. Thunderclap is fueling some of the world's most important causes. From mental health to gay rights, curing cancer, climate change, missing children, Red Nose Day, Human Rights Watch, the Royal British Legion, immigration laws, the Obama campaign, the Obama campaign, and many more. Thunderclap has taken off organically, attracting an amazing group of some of the world's most influential people, and is fast becoming a go-to platform for change. Joining forces with Beyonce, the United Nations harnessed the power of Thunderclap to send over one billion social media messages at the same time, instantly becoming a trending topic in 17 countries. In fact, 10% of the thousands of Thunderclaps created so far become a trending topic. And now, Thunderclap can be embedded on any site on the internet as a button for change. The very first site to use it was the White House. Using Thunderclap's technology, the Obama administration rallied people to fight gun violence. In its first six months, Thunderclap has caught the attention of a variety of groups, from the New York tech community and even corporate publications. It was deemed the future of social empowerment by Forbes and the number one tool for civic engagement by GoodNet. Change happens when we come together. Thunderclap gives anyone the opportunity to speak up for what they believe in and be heard. Again, really simple ideas, just what we're doing every day, but put it in a way that it can be more useful, more helpful, and you can do more with it. Uh, this is, uh, I, I think we're running a little bit late on time. Maybe I skip this? No, we can see it. It's a really small idea, and, and it's really fun. So it's how, uh, it, it's not all about Dove or Intel. It can also be uh, technology can help a small brands to, to, to get people and also get people all around the world. This is a nice, funny example of, how, of that. I think main point of uh, social media is the how fast it is. So by being fast, they are not really worried about their accuracy. They're more worried about the message. We have celebrities that are not really worried about the language. Concerning education, uh, it's really bad because uh, when they see their idols speaking like that, they come to us and say, but this is right, he's American, he's using it. And it's not the case. Love is it. It's love it. Teacher is I've never seen. Brazilian with Z. Heard is with A. Hi Pink. Hey Charlie Hi here. Hi Miley. I'm a big Brazilian fan. My name is Marcos. Felipe. Carlin. I'm Alexia from Brazil. I'm 10. 11. I appreciate your work. But sorry, it's not love able, it's lovable. Hey Charlie man, use your brain. B-R-A-I-N, not B-R-A-N-E. Be careful, it's I've just seen the world's largest pumpkin. Hugs. Hey Ben Stiller, I'm a big fan and I tried to help you on Twitter. Awesome. Great. Yay. It's possible to have teenagers writing better than native speakers because they are there, they are studying, they want their accuracy.
Again, it's a, how a small brand can tackle the really big stars and it's impossible to get paid and how they can really do something about it. I mean, it's really powerful idea, a small one. Yeah, it spreads with the friends of the kids, but also with the media and everybody gets to know this uh, language school. The, the, the new example, it's really amazing. It's one of the things uh, we heard uh, and it was talked about in, in TED Talks about uh, some years ago. It, it was how, uh, because we're all talking about technology, the new iPod, the new stuff, we all have uh, smartphones, but there's a large, uh, large, large amount of people in the, in the world that they don't have access to this. So how can we help them and use technology to change their lives with, with the technology they have in that moment, not with the latest iPhone? For Philippine public schools, textbooks have become a burden. But while developed countries have solved this problem through tablets and e-readers, for these families, even the cheapest models cost more than their whole monthly income. In fact, the only gadgets most of them own are old analog mobile phones. Then we realized, what if we could use these millions of old phones to create a new brand of textbook? Smart, the country's largest telecom, took its mission to make text light and easy further than ever as we introduced Smart Textbooks. Over six months, we collaborated with respected textbook publishers to condense official texts into text messages. These were then programmed into the inboxes of thousands of inactive surplus SIM cards, which were then repackaged into new Smart Textbooks. We launched them in partner schools where the simple and, in fact, low-tech solution made a profound, sustainable impact. It turned even the oldest phone and old SIM cards into a new brand of textbook. So less effort was spent carrying and storing books and far more effort learning from them. And with petitions and pledges from education sector members, Smart Textbooks is going even further with plans already underway for more subjects, kits so schools themselves can reproduce smart textbooks for free, and best of all, a rollout across the entire Philippines. Well, we always like to be at the cutting edge of innovation, particularly relevant innovation. Balang araw, mabibigyan natin sila lahat ng tablets, pero sa ngayon, eh, dapat simulan natin. Ito ang pinaka-perfect na simula. Fulfilling Smart's mission to make every kind of text light and easy for all. Again, technology being really useful and how to connect the brand, uh, telecommunication brand, with the people, with the real people. And not the latest technology. I mean, technology, a really basic one, right? Yeah, because this kind of uh, company could have been trying to sell only iPhones and the latest uh, rates and with uh, smartphones, but they, 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 you, you know, they did something useful for the people and for the real people that they didn't have to even buy a phone. It was, you had all phones, we're going to do this for your kids. Uh, I don't know if we have one, time. No? Okay. We need question and answers? Yeah, we're going to just, because we've been talking, 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 and how, what do you do could be your, <laughs> your, your question. You know, and what are you doing, guys, uh, with your clients? And one of the, we are just going to leave you with uh, the last example is a thing we just did this summer. It's a mix, again, of the old traditional uh, communication and put it in a new in in a new way with a twist with technology. If spring is the season of love, summer is the season of crazy unexplainable romances. And who haven't dreamt of going crazy and declaring love for everybody can see it? Introducing Cornetto Love Plane. The first plane with a banner feed by Twitter. Just using hashtag Cornetto Sky Tweets, teenagers could declare their love both online and in the sky. So, if your tweet was one of the most retweeted ones, you could see it flying all over the beaches of Malaga almost immediately. Three different planes, gallons of paint, one new tweet every 15 minutes.
because summer love tastes better for the cornet. Cornetta Love Play, coming soon to a beach near you. So the final message is uh, technology did kill the ad. No, it killed the, the traditional ad. It's killing it, but it doesn't. It didn't kill the advertising. What she really did is like a really make a really shock in advertising. I mean, it kicked the the board and make us start over again completely. And more power. I think more powerful than ever. I think that it's it's really strong to be in the ideas business right now more than before. It's the best moment to be a creative around the world because you have so many tools. So that's it. Thank you very much. So we have a Q&A, right? Any questions? Yep. Hi, my name is Jana. Just a quick question. What is your favorite ad which was launched like six months ago, let's say, in the last year? And which is your least favorite ad? <laughs> no, no, no. Least. Say the least. No, I don't know. I, I think one of the, for me, one of the best campaigns we've seen in the last year is the Dove campaign. I think it touches you. It's amazing. And it's a way of, I have five sisters, so I know what they're talking about. And, and, and it's really touching. And, and it's interesting that a brand talks to women and to real women like that. The least, I don't know, touch them. The 99%, I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, uh, the majority of advertising is really bad. It's pollution, right? It's people to try to sell you something really, really hard. I can pick anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, first of all, thanks for the presentation. Great one. Uh, I, have a, I have a question about analytics. I have noticed there is a lot of new products around analytics for marketing. Adobe has one. Other people, do you use them like day to, in a day-to-day -day work? Or where do you see this going forward? Like, How are you able to use analytics when you do internet campaigns to make the uh, campaigns more effective? Because it's, I imagine it's really hard to actually measure the impact of the ads, like the DAF ads, like what's the actual impact on customers? Thanks. I mean, yeah. there, is a, sorry, there is a lot of, um, right now, controversy about exactly what is the impact of the things, how you measure the, the success of the campaign, if you measure it with likes, if you measure it with comments, with shares, with, the, with the, how you measure the quality. But it's a really big debate right now. I mean, I think that it's really difficult to, to define one because we are in a really early stage of understanding the data. Uh, I think that the time will decide what, which is the best one right now. Yeah, but actually in the last campaign, uh, we, we saw that it was ours, the only one that was ours. We use analytics uh, live. You know, we were watching how people was retweeting the tweets. We were watching uh, in that same moment which ones were the most retweeted ones. And, and we were, you know, trying to see how we could spread more because we had, uh, we had the planes going around, so we needed to, to put the message. And it was a huge... Uh, Success and was really useful to use the analytics in that moment because you could see which uh, tweets were the most uh, retweeted, the funny ones, and 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 I think we're we're kind of using them uh, most of the time. We when we do a campaign, they send us the analytics uh, most of the time. The thing is, as Chacho said, how can we interpret it? How can we tell clients they are useful or not, or if something is working or not? Because you see, like the Dove. Uh, numbers are amazing. You know, it's the most retweeted, uh, not retweeted, the most shared ad in the history of advertising. And is, is that better than being, for example, chosen the best ad at the Super Bowl? We still don't know. I mean, it, uh, it's really difficult to um, make the match between that and sales. So that what is the end is the, is the message. But you don't know if the sales is going to come later because they, you don't need to change all the time your cream. So difficult uh, all the campaigns we saw was uh, maybe it was a big 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 budget uh, but what if you have no to maybe just a little budget 
you saw the one of the of the tweets. The police uh, that is super cheap. It's just the kids of your school tweeting to the the police. Uh, the police one the from grammar the, police. the grammar police. I mean that is super no, cheap. No, and the and the I think the Oreo campaign is also really really cheap campaign to do because actually you have an art director doing uh, uh, an ad the day and a design a day based on the cookies and it's more or less what we do every day with with the meaning and and I think that technology is helping brands and it's actually it's against the agencies because we're we're in a trouble whether how to to put a fee to the ideas how to charge clients because they say no you just you just wrote a, a tweet how are you, why are you going to charge me because you wrote a tweet? You didn't do a TV commercial. And I said, yeah, but the tweet got a lot more results that, than the TV commercial. So we're in that moment where we don't know. But I think the, the opportunities are out there. You can do a, a nice Twitter campaign or you can do something on Facebook that can be really interesting. Actually, IKEA had a, had a campaign that where they put all their, you know, their, their store, they put it online as pictures. And if you tag yourself in the picture, above uh, a furniture it was yours and it got you know it spread like wildfire because it was amazing and it was really cheap it's just pictures of the store and just giving away I don't know a hundred uh, pieces of furniture so I don't know we, we can always try to find a way okay thank you very much